This is the most practical, real advice that I've given that actually generates dollars. It is massively important if you want to be successful in life to know and try and learn how to make money. All the information I'm giving you today is exactly what I would do if I moved to a different city and had to start from day one. I would take each one of these steps and it would take me probably a month or a couple months to get things off the ground. I own Streakers Window Cleaning and um, it's been my business for a while now and I've actually helped about 10 other people start their window cleaning business. So here are some basic things you need to know before you start your window cleaning business or side hustle. Do you love mingling, going out there, meeting people and maybe even making a little extra money? Here are some side hustles for you extroverts. New fresh, you've never done it before or you've never amassed more than 5,000 before and you're gonna do this. I believe if you take that one hour when you're commuting and actually search on eBay and search what are clothes worth? What are what are hammers worth? Like what is this hammer worth? Do you know how much this hammer will go for? $20. Yeah, $7.99, better than zero. Especially we don't have it. You have two hammers, $14. <laughs> Where's the other hammer? Right there. <laughs> Fuck, two hammers, $14. Actually, this hammer might go for nine. But you can easily go search hammer and you can go then to completed items, sold items, and see what people are doing. The tens of let's go ask AJ actually. Bro, yeah. real quick, how many hours do you <laughs> think you put in researching eBay sold like how do we build our education? What how many hours really? What's your Realistically? Point? Realistically. You tweet at thousands, right? I don't but it's not I don't, thousands. It's not right? thousands. I get excited sometimes. I would say We would get pumped on Friday nights. Let me yeah, tell do you it for like two or three like hours, this. just that. On Friday nights, me and AJ would literally be on instant messenger back in the day, pre mobile. And and right, pre mobile. Yeah, yeah, it was and instant two thousand three. I'll have to get this I've used instant messenger in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> we we literally would stay like we would have to get up at I we lived far away. I was in New York, he was in Hunter County, New Jersey. I would go and drive you oh no, we met Men's at Springfield because Spring you were driving now. Anyway, nonetheless, like we'd have three, to get up four hours. We'd have to get up at four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning to go to these flea markets and then garage sales. And at midnight uh, we're yeah. like sending each other a link like, wait a minute, marbles are worth a lot yeah, of money. Buttons and but jars. <laughs> do you have any video games? What do you think, Gary? What's the best you think you can do on it? 40? Give the ladies 40. I like it. Anyway, take every hour, every hour this year to make this 21 day. I would, say, I would uh -oh. say 150 to 300 hours. Okay, great. And by the way, and by the way, really did, and by the like, way we only did it on like 15 categories. It's a never ending yeah, game. Well, because you want to be in a position, if you're, if you want to buy mugs, you got to be in a position that when you walk into a garage sale and they have 40 mugs and they're asking five bucks a piece, you need to be able to cherry pick two of them. So that's why you have to go deep. You have to go deep. Expert. expert. So but, but, AJ, <laughs> the thing that's changed huge, did AJ have to go? Right. The, if you have your phone, you can look it up. Yeah. It's going to be 200 bucks. Really? You know, 40 to 200 boys and girls. <laughs> All the pieces for 150. That's how you make 150 bucks in 10 seconds at 7.30 in the morning on a Saturday. <laughs> it's easier, you have a yeah. phone on you, you take your phone, you take the eBay app, you can literally scan some items if they have a UPC, but if not, you just search Flintstones mug, you go to completed items, you see how much it's sold for, how often it's sold, understand the supply and demand of the market, and if the person, by the way, mugs are a quarter, they're not five bucks at garage sales, they're a quarter, maybe a dollar, and you're like, I'll give you 50 cents, and if you can make nine bucks, it's also a great hobby, but most of all, here's the punchline. So many of you are trying to build a business, and you're begging for money, you're crippled by not having money. I have a huge community now on social networks, and there are, I, I don't know how many people wouldn't want to have $20,170 extra in their pocket, and a lot of you have bigger ambitions. I know a lot of you are about to say, oh, this is small, I don't need it, it's taking away time, I could be working on my business. I don't want you to take time away from your business. I don't want you to take time away from your family. I want you to take your time away from other dumb shit if you're complaining, if you don't complain and you don't want the $20,170, then do you play Call of Duty, watch fucking every bowl game. But if you're complaining and you're struggling and you're hungry and you can't breathe because you want to win like me, well then do this because every one of you has a foundation of between $500 and $5,000 worth of junk in your closet, attic, 
and garage basement right now. Every one of you, it's insane. Even the poorest of us in America have stuff laying around. A jacket you're not wearing anymore. Sneakers that are out of style. Those sneakers go for 19 bucks. I mean, P-Rock, I really need you to spread a bunch of uh, stuff from like the social networks, like screens here while I'm yapping. I want people to see, I made 200 bucks today, I made 700 bucks today, I made 38 bucks today. The key is doing your homework. The one thing I wanna make sure, I've seen a lot of you post and be successful, but you've sold your product for half the price because you created a buy it now price that is half the price of its worth. This image that I sent DRock, completed and sold items. You have to understand that. You have to understand what things sell for and you have to understand if they sell. The reason completed matters is you can see 58 people didn't sell that you know, goofy toy and one person got sold it for 18 bucks and that's why you can't price it at 18 bucks, buy it now and think it's just gonna sell because the supply and demand is off. It always comes down to the work. This is the most practical, real advice that I've given that actually generates dollars. It is massively important if you want to be successful in life to know and try and learn how to make money. First things first, you're going to need licensing and insurance. So you're going to want to go to your local city court and get a business license. If you don't know where it is, you can probably just Google it. Um, you can structure this however you want, depending on how serious you are. You may want to consult a tax professional, like if you're thinking about optimizing it for an S corp. But generally Generally, an LLC is a great business structure for anybody who's looking to get a, a business started. But once you've taken care of that, the next step is going to be to get insurance. Now, I will say this, if you go locally or if you find a local insurance provider, they will probably be cheaper. Next, let's go ahead and get into the equipment section. However, first things first, if we're starting a pressure washing business, we probably need a pressure washer. So I recommend everybody go out to Lowe's and get your pressure washer for a couple of different reasons. A, they're cheap. B, if you figure you don't want to do this business anymore, you can always return it. Now, if you go through like Amazon to get your pressure washer, it's going to be a little bit harder to return. Lowe's doesn't typically ask any questions. Also, whenever you buy a pressure washer through Lowe's, you can get a warranty. If anything ever happens to that pressure washer within the warranty, I've had this happen before. I'll just bring the pressure washer in and they'll exchange it out for one that they have on the shelf so that's something that you cannot do on amazon so if you're looking to get a pressure washer you're just starting your business you don't know if this is necessarily something that you're going to do long term i would highly recommend just going to lowe's you can get a decent pressure washer from about 250 to 500 dollars, but you could probably get like the highest end pressure washer that lowe's sells uh, for about a thousand dollars maybe a little bit more um, so with regards to pressure washers two and a half gallon per minute to four gallon per minute is going to be best for beginners i wouldn't go anything lower than two and a half i know i've seen washers that are like 1.8 or whatever those are typically electric washers which i'm going to talk about here in just a second but two and a half to four gallon per minute is probably going to be best for you also the range for psi anywhere between 2500 to 4000 is going to be um, a good psi range for you there's a misconception out there amongst a lot of people and that is that the higher the psi the better the washer is and ultimately psi does not matter because we'll not be we won't be using pressure in order to clean most of the services that we're going to be cleaning so the pounds per square inch really doesn't matter essentially if you clean the services the correct way you can wash them off with a garden hose and they would be good but just pressure washers are good for things like concrete however if we're cleaning like stucco or we're cleaning like vinyl siding you don't want to be hitting those with 4,000 pounds of pressure next the pressure tips on your washer are going to be what controls the water pressure this was something that I didn't know for a very long time I was always curious why they put so many different wash tips or they gave me so many different wash tips whenever they gave me my pressure washer the smaller the degree on the tip the more pressure pressure is going to be produced with that tip. So as soon as you get your pressure washer, take the red tip and go ahead and throw it in the trash can. That is a zero degree tip and it shoots like a straight line. If you hit somebody's house with a zero degree tip and a 4,000 PSI pressure washer, you will cause damage. So just go ahead and throw that one away. I would recommend using the white and the yellow ones. Those were the ones that I always use most. They have a good spread on them, uh, but it's not going to be too much pressure. You can also get a thing called a J-Rod, which I'm going to talk about here in just a few minutes, but basically that's going to have like a shooter tip, a fan tip. It's going to have pretty much everything that you're going to need, and you can find that at southeastsoftwash.com. Now, I wouldn't recommend going with anything electric with regards to your pressure washer. I mentioned this earlier because it's going to create unnecessary hurdles for yourself with cords. And also it's going to look kind of unprofessional if you're trying to haul around this little pressure washer with cords around somebody's house. Just my opinion, of course, do whatever you have to do to get started. If all you had was access to, you know, an electric pressure washer, I know plenty of uh, mobile detailers that use electric pressure washers. However, they're not having to haul them around the house. So it is a little bit different. I'm just letting you know that if you do get one, 
it will be a pain. It will be a little bit unprofessional. And of course, water and electricity never mix. So I wouldn't want to create any instances where I could, you know, combine those two, especially at someone else's property. So I don't recommend electric pressure washers. Um, anything over four gallons per minute, as far as what the pressure washer is rated, rated for, uh, you're going to need a water tank. So that's why I recommend Lowe's in the beginning, because if you're needing to put a water tank on, you're going to need a couple of other components that are going to make it uh, more costly, something like a trailer and just some other pieces. So I recommend anything under four gallons per minute. Typically, people's spigots are rated from three to four gallons per minute, and that's why if you use anything over that, you need a higher flow than what the spigot will allow, and essentially your, your machine is going to need to pull more water than what the spigot will give it. So that's why you need... Um, that's why you need a buffer tank, something that kind of allows you to pull more water as you need it. I love Facebook ads. I'm really good at running them. I'm really good at getting customers from them. I've landed $10,000 plus dollar jobs off of Facebook ads, and um, I've just done really well with those. So learn how to run some good Facebook ads. You're going to get a bunch of customers. Also, you can try flyers. Whenever you're first starting out, you really want to rely on sweat equity over some of the other digital forms of marketing or forms of marketing that are going to cost you money because what we lack in money early on, we can make up for in effort. So flyers are a good way to go. I used to pass out a neighborhood a day until I'd get jobs, and then I'd do those jobs, and then I'd just hit a neighborhood a day until... I got more jobs. And so with flyers, it's about getting in front of them multiple times. It's about using that sweat equity. And it's basically how I started. Another way that you can go is clip flyers, which you put a clip on a flyer and you throw it out the window. I highly don't recommend this because I consider it littering and I hate anyone who clip flyers my house or clip flyers. I just don't like it. Uh, the other ones that you can go with are um, yard signs. Uh, you can use other apps like Craigslist Next Door, Let Go, Facebook groups to kind of solicit your business in there. Uh, you could try some door knocking, which is a very powerful method. I know a lot of people that got a lot of business very quickly door knocking and offering their services. I've done uh, videos where I talked about different scripts that you can use when door knocking. I will tell you this before I go on to the next one. One of the biggest things that you're going to want to do is leverage the fact that you've been in the neighborhood that you You've done work for so and so down the street, and that you're offering a special deal uh, since you're already here today. So, a couple different things you need to act on with regards to door knocking, but it's very powerful to get jobs very quickly. And then, lastly, you, know, you got word of mouth. There's tons and tons of ways you guys can get business, and tons of different strategies that I've made videos on on my channel. The biggest thing is, is you want to find a handful of things and you want to execute them day after day after day after day, and you want to be consistent with them because what gets measured gets improved and you want to make sure you're measuring where all these leads are coming from, which is something you can do within quote IQ. Um, but basically with regards to your marketing, you want to stay consistent over time, leverage sweat equity in the beginning to make up for what you don't have in money, pass out flyers, yard signs, door hangers, whatever you got to do. And then later on, once you start making some money back from jobs, then start reinvesting that money back into paid ads in order to scale your business. And that's going to be the best marketing formula that I can give you in this video. Step number one of this entire thing is a disclaimer that I made in the last business video like this. And it's understanding that building a creative business is a process. It's not something that happens overnight. This is not a get rich quick thing or a get results quick thing. This is something that actionably is going to take a couple months for you to get off the ground, which we'll explain throughout this video. And if you want instant gratification, go on Instagram, buy one of these courses that people are promoting for $1,500 and you will get that feeling because that is what those people are selling. They're selling you on the feeling of doing something, not the actual action of doing something. And that's not what we're about on this channel or on moderncreativemoney.com and all the information I'm giving you today is exactly what I would do if I moved to a different city and had to start from day one. I would take each one of these steps and it would take me probably a month or a couple months to get things off the ground. So that is kind of the step number one, the first disclaimer to this video, but the real step number one of this process is identifying the product that you are selling. All right, if you have a camera, obviously you are doing something with it. But one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they don't identify what exactly are they selling to the world? They just want to do everything. And when it comes to making this, you know, first thousand dollars a month, you really just want to focus on one thing that you are doing. Now, realistically, there are three main ways to make money with a camera. The first is clients. The second is products. And the third is social media. When it comes to clients, clients is the easiest way to make money with a camera. The reason it's so easy is because there's little to no barrier to entry. You can just have a camera, 
know some people and start saying, hey, I'm doing photo shoots. If anyone needs it, here's my rate. You just can kind of jump into it. And that's the reason why so many creative businesses start in a client-driven environment. That's where I started. That's where most of my friends started. And that's probably where you're going to start as well. Products is a little bit more difficult than clients because there is some barrier to entry. You have to have a little bit of business savvy to get a product-based business off the ground. So the types of products that you can sell as an artist with a camera are things like digital products, presets, LUTs for video, maybe editing tutorials if you're really good at Photoshop, um, maybe you're selling like brush packs for Photoshop or something like that. There's a lot of different options out there, transition packs, or maybe you want to sell physical products like prints or photo books. That's what I've done in the past. If you're doing either of these things, the barrier to entry is one, figuring out where to sell them. You have to either build a website, you have to figure out your payment processing, you have to go meet somebody who has a gallery. It's just an extra step. And obviously you gotta learn the skills necessary to run some type of internet business. And you also need to understand margins if you're selling physical products. There's just extra steps as opposed to just grabbing a camera, walking out into the world and trying to book clients. The third way to make money with a camera is is pretty irrelevant to this video, but I wanted to include it just for the sake of the information being out there, and that is social media. Now, social media is a great way to make money. If you're an influencer, you can get paid for views, you can get paid for subscriptions, you can get paid for sponsorships and working with brands and creating for them, but in my experience, what I've found is most people getting paid from social media are getting paid because they use their social media as a way to promote their product business or their client business, and as they're social media grow, grew, those opportunities started to present themselves. Step number three is doing the math of your business. So you have your product, you have your customer. How many customers do you need with your product to make a thousand dollars a month? So let's say you're that family portrait photographer and the package you're planning on selling is $250 for 15 photos, two looks, and two hours of photos plus the editing time. I feel like that's a pretty good package to start out with. The math on that works out to four of these perfect clients every single month to get to $1,000, which seems pretty reasonable, honestly. If you're just putting in a little bit of extra work, even if you have a job or something like that, it doesn't sound too hard to book four clients a month at that price point. So that's what you'd have to do to get to that thousand dollar number. Now, like I said, if you're someone in the product sector of this video, there might be a little bit more math involved in this. If you're selling physical products, like you make prints, maybe your prints cost $25. So you want to make a thousand dollars. So you know, if you sell 10 of them at 125, you'll make a thousand because you got to subtract the 25 off of that. So your profit is a hundred, a hundred times 10 is a thousand dollars. It's still pretty basic math. So I'm sure most of you can figure it out. But once again, products is just a little bit stickier than you know, just saying, all right, I have four $250 photo shoots a month. This is going to be easy. Step number four in this process is planning your acquisition of your customers. Now, here's how you do this. It's imperfect. All right. There's no set in stone way to acquire your customers. Every person watching this video is going to have a little bit of a different plan based on all the tools that they have at their disposal. So let's say you're that family portrait example photographer that we've already talked about. If you're one of these people and you already know a bunch of families out there, your strategy for capturing clients might be to do a bunch of free photo shoots for the people that you already know with families and make a deal with them saying, hey, you can get the photos for free just promote me on your social media when you post them. Say photos by so-and-so photographer, Evan Ramp family photo business, whatever your handle is, and just promote me so I can start booking clients that way and I can get some social proof that way. But let's say you're someone who maybe only knows one family. You could do that strategy with them, but maybe you need to go on Facebook and start getting into Facebook groups and maybe making posts there or maybe figuring out a way to promote your services to school 
tools or graduation shoots or something like that. Maybe you need to expand out into an area where your perfect customer hangs out. And that is the easiest way to think about this. That's something that I got from Russell Brunson's book, Dot Com Secrets. Think about where your perfect customer congregates. So if you're someone who is doing car photography, for example, you probably want to go to car meets, car shows. You want to be in the areas where people who care about their cars and maybe are trying to promote their cars would be. And then through that, maybe you can meet people who have car shops. You know, I have a Toyota 4Runner and I'm sure that there are places who modify 4Runners that need photos for their social media. So maybe you can create connections that way. I own Streakers Window Cleaning and um, it's been my business for a while now and I've actually helped about 10 other people start their window cleaning business. So here are some basic things you need to know before you start your window cleaning business or side hustle. All this stuff is all you need to start your business. So let's go through it and, and see kind of how much it all costs. Basically this right here, you could get for under $100, all right? So the first thing you're gonna need, obviously, is what we call a washer. This is great, it's got a handle, super cheap, 20 to $30, you can get you a good one of these. Probably cheaper than that, but you wanna have a washer, and then you wanna have a squeegee. You see here, I got a 12-inch squeegee, that's what I learned on, it's the easiest one to kind of get going on. Then I graduated up to an 18-inch squeegee, once again, you're talking relatively cheap. You can get a good one for under $20. And then see even here, I have this mini washer. You can graduate into different sizes. But all you need to really get started in the window cleaning business is a washer and a squeegee. Now, it's gonna be a lot easier, of course, if you have a bucket. So you can get any kind of bucket. I like this kind of bucket. Uh, instead of like a round Home Depot bucket, this bucket allows you to immerse the entire washer inside. Once you do that, I kind of get it nice and wet and you're obviously gonna need Dawn dish soap. That is literally our secret. That is all we use to clean windows. I keep this little one on hand all the time, refill it with a big one. I put a dash of soap on there, scrub it up, boom, get going, wash, squeegee, okay? Washer, squeegee, bucket, Dawn dish soap. Another thing that's really gonna help you and probably is a necessity is some kind of scrubber. You can get a scrubber like this on Window Cleaner Resource or you can get steel wool also on Window Cleaner Resource, but you need to make sure you get steel wool that's four zeros. That won't scratch the windows. A good, good kind of like scrubber, abrasive, that's gonna help you get a lot of dirt and grime. And then some detailing towels. I'm not kidding you, right here, you could get all this for less than $100. You could start this weekend. So now I wanna give three tips on how to even get started once you have some of that equipment. That's probably one of the scariest parts for people, especially if they're going full blown in it as a business, but just, hey, how do I get jobs? First of all, I got my first window cleaning job before I had even purchased equipment. And as soon as I got that job, I went on and I bought the equipment that I needed. But number one, if you're trying to figure out how to get some jobs, look within the network you already have, okay? Whether that's calling your parents, your parents' friends, your uncles and aunts, and your friends' grandparents, things like that. Look in your circle first, and and obviously we're in the day and age of social media. Just be fully transparent. Hey, I have a job, but I'm trying to make some extra money. I'm gonna start cleaning windows on the weekends. If you need my help, I can help. So you're gonna look at your immediate circle and start branching out from there. You start posting about it on Facebook, on Instagram, TikTok. Your close inner circle will start sharing it. They're gonna root for you. Just start spreading it out that way. Number two, how do you charge? Well, in the beginning, you don't really know how and you're not gonna be very good at it probably. So you're not gonna wanna charge that much. Um, in the beginning, I actually started my business with uh, Christmas lights and then we moved into window cleaning. So we actually charged $50 an hour for our labor. It was way too little, but I was so excited for people to actually start paying me to do something for them that it didn't matter, right? So maybe you start off and you say, hey, I'm gonna do your windows, I'm gonna do $50 an hour. I promise you a 15 window house is gonna take you about two hours to complete. So you're gonna make $100. I guarantee you $50 an hour is probably better than what you're making at whatever job you already have, right? That's why you're looking to get a side hustle. So maybe that's how you start or maybe by w per window you do $6 a window for in and out. Again, that's extremely cheap, but I'm 
I'm trying to help you figure out how to get started in your side hustle or in your small business. I charge in Oklahoma City $11 to $13 for just your regular window. That's still really cheap in different parts of the country. So a lot of it's gonna have to depend on where you're at. So uh, figure it out, research it, give it a go. There's a ton of other people that's made a lot of YouTube videos, so check that out. Number three, this was really important to me every time I grew my business a little bit, and that is lean into the moments where you're a little bit afraid to say yes, right? I would get some jobs or I'd bid a job and definitely underbidded it, but the person would say yes, and then I would look at it and I'd be like, oh my gosh, it's 200 windows or uh, I need to get a ladder for the roof or whatever, and the good news is it forced me to grow. So when you get in the situation where you're saying, hey, I'm reaching into my inner circle, I'm actually getting jobs, I'm actually quoting, I feel like I can even start raising some of my prices. Three, the moment that you feel like like, ah, I probably shouldn't say yes to this, or I'm scared to try that. Someone just asked me to do pressure washing, now I'd have to go get a pressure washer. I'd say always lean into yes. In the beginning, yes is your friend. It's gonna stretch you, it's gonna help you grow. And I would say right there, the equipment, those three tips, within two to three months, you're gonna start making some good extra money on the side, and probably even get to the point where you're like, man, maybe I could actually do this as a business.